the Leo and Danny show. Uh, doctor, we were talking about Tony Robbins earlier. Mm -hmm. The book I'm reading right now is about finances by Tony <laughs> Robbins. It talks about the percentages your portfolio should be broken up into mm -hmm. stocks and bonds. If you could give me a similar pie chart, fingering, oral foreplay versus sex, what percentages are you looking for for a satisfying sexual experience? That's a great question. That's I mean, what I'm here for. I wish I could give you an answer, but every single body is so different, different that, yeah. you know, I could tell you it's 30% oral, 30% nipple, 10% Ooh, nipple. Neck. I didn't even of thought course, about that. It's in a an erogenous oh, zone, Danny. Yeah. Yeah. Doctor, can you, you... Know, nipples can have whole orgasms on their own, right? Nipple orgasms. Yeah. Danny, we have much to learn. Don't I, I, like uh, Dr. Nipples. Kate's going to have to be on the show another time. Doctor, as well. I don't want to make you uncomfortable and have you give us your own portfolio, so uh -huh. to speak. But can I uh, just maybe just say it's your cousins or something like that and give us actual <laughs> hard numbers right here? Because I'm dying to know. You can be vague, but right? round it to the nearest 10. You know, what, what I'll say is that it varies depending on the mood. Gotcha. Um, but very infrequently is more than 50% of my interest considered uh, focused on vaginal penetration. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So really, guys, diversify. Diversify You're the doing portfolio. doing yourself a favor. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, I think that, yeah, I feel like men, God, we are good with instructions. Mm -hmm. And if women out there, you have this matter of fact approach that you have with us right now. Mm -hmm. I feel like me and Danny are ingesting it right now and we're going to go and we're going to do it on our girlfriends mm -hmm. and it's going to help our sexual relationship mm -hmm. because, you know, I, I, th I feel like the communication between partners is never like this though. No, it's not. This is great. And you yeah. know what would blow their minds even more, I bet? Mm -hmm. If you went home and you said, okay. Here's a roadmap of your body. Show me some directions. Tell me what you like. What <laughs> parts should I circle? Mm. Right? right? Like, what rest stops am I waiting in and hanging out for a while? That is mm. the key. And if you invite them, and now they may not know, because this is the real kick in the pants, right? Women are so stigmatized for being sexual more often than not that mm -hmm. many of them have just completely disconnected from their own sort of pleasure sense and they haven't taken as much time to really get to know their bodies and figure out what they like so they may not know what they want and if they say i don't know they might be nervous to tell you or they might not know so mm -hmm. slow down take some time to really explore with them because if you really like explore that landscape that's that's the that that the, that, the, the that keys made me think I'm out. Yeah, the keys of the kingdom right there. <laughs> and so, doctor, I read a book. You probably are even familiar with it. It's called "She Comes First oh, yeah. by some guy who's some sort of doctor, dude. Ian Kerner. She knows his yes, name, of course. <laughs> I read that book, and the general approach it prescribes for oral sex is great. Yeah, I brought many a woman. I do mean many to climax with <laughs> Ian's moves. The problem is, though, I feel like once you use that a couple times on your girl, she starts to understand what you're doing. Okay, I, here it is again: the slow build around my legs and stomach mm -hmm. to my lower vagina, and then after much teasing, we come up to the clitoris. And then we come back to the clitoris and then we focus on the clitoris after about 15 minutes of teasing. I feel like a woman is going to get bored because she's the tease is no longer a tease mm -hmm. the 16th time you've teased her. How can I change up my approach? Well, why are you starting with the same starting point every time you have sex? He's very me mechanical about his life. He's He has a routine with everything he does. So yeah. I could see that, that he would do it in the bedroom as well. Sort of true. Well, yeah. it just, that's so, that's what he essentially prescribes is a, a buildup to oral sex mm -hmm. that works in more or less the same way. He doesn't give you a bunch of different permutations like, oh, this time you're going to just lick her asshole after a baseball <laughs> game right when you open the door. And then you're going to go back to the pussy move. Uh, it's... If you're going to do that, yeah. make sure you're being clean. You know, yeah. Bring a washcloth because UTIs can happen when you go back to front. I'm tired of you yeah. hygiene shaming Back to front, me. Danny. UTIs, all right? Yeah. Back to front. You remember that. Oh, I told my girlfriend to wipe her ass, asshole to pussy. Jesus Christ. Well, that's <laughs> is, is that why incorrect? the UTIs happen. That is happen. incorrect. Oh, yeah. That is incorrect. Oh, yeah. Um, what... I have a question. Wait, about... I'm still curious about my approach with the vagina. I'm sorry. Right, go ahead. No, continue. Wait, absolutely. Oral sex. Oh, yeah. Okay, so here's the thing. Any kind of like ritualized routine is going to get boring after a while because mm -hmm. as human beings, we like shiny new objects and we like shiny new dance moves. So it's fine if you want to use a similar kind of oral sex routine, but don't just start with that, you know, play around. Focus on different parts of your partner's body, you know, take one sex experience and focus on their back. Kiss that, rub that, touch that with different kind of tactile um 
stimulants mm-hmm. and really focus on getting different parts of the body aroused. And then when she's super hot and heavy mm-hmm. and ready to go, then go do the Ian Kerner mm-hmm. move on her vagina. What about just climaxing on her back and then taking a nap? Jesus. I Danny. mean, if that works <laughs> for like her. That. If that works for her, <laughs> to each their own. But No, I like that though. I, I'm joking, but that's yeah. that's smart. I like that. Yeah, you can you can move the different recipes around and still get great sauce. I would like to say in of the vast majority of my sexual encounters, the women have been like, <laughs> I've had sex with quite, I have sex with people and I don't tell y'all, just so you know. Oh, people, really? Yes. Well, uh, thank you. It's fine. No, we me understand. Me and Brooks hooked up a couple times. No, I'm just oh, kidding. God. But, but go uh, ahead. Uh, the, most of the chicks that I come across with are like, skip all that shit, just go straight to fucking me, and then slap the shit out of me and choke me until I pass out. Jesus. You can't clean up your language a little bit for the good doctor. That's how the girls are. They're like, bro, just stop all this bullshit. I want you to choke me and slap me and then leave. I I don't know if you... Most chicks... Have you encountered with the age group, the young, the 19 to... The 18 to 21 crowd currently with the porn generate, the phones, they're kind of nuts, right? Sexually, or they have their own issues going to pathologize them but Uh what what i will say is that definitely people who grew up with porn as their primary um source of sexual education Mm -hmm. they have a different relationship to sex than people who didn't austin's relationship like that girls my age like violence it seems like they all like fucking being the get the shit kicked I, out. I will say that almost every girl I've been with, even if they come from a perfectly normal, perfectly healthy household, mm-hmm. they all seem to enjoy getting slapped, getting spanked lightly, getting spit on, and getting verbally abused. On a kid, like every single time they have sex? Is, ba- I've, I've encountered it, basically. Not every single time, but every single yeah. girl that yeah, I've been with for a long period of time. At some point will enjoy that, but isn't that normal? I mean... So there, there's nothing wrong with liking a little bit of aggression, liking a little bit of humor humiliation, liking a little bit of that play. I think there's a couple things to keep in mind here. When sex is more casual or more transactional, we tend to live out different kinds of fantasies than we do when we're with our primary partner, right? Mm -hmm. Generally, and it's not to say that you can't be kinky as fuck with your primary partner. First Mm -hmm. time she's dropped an (laughs) F-bomb. I'm guessing it's okay. It's encouraged. Encouraged. (laughs) Um, You could be totally kinky and and fun and adventurous with your primary partner, but also there tends to be more intimate sex too. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, we don't really go on one night stands to have like really lovey-dovey, gooey, kiss me all night, look into my eye sex. Uh But a lot of people love that and they can do that too. But so what we're saying, Austin, is that none of these girls are considering you as a serious boyfriend. <laughs> well, that is part of my problem, though, is that a lot of these girls that I start hooking up with, they fall for me like hard. <laughs> and then I'm stuck in this awkward position where it's like, OK, I'm not supposed to go fuck other chicks, apparently, but I'm also not dating you. And I also don't want you getting dick down two seconds before I put my dick in there. So then I usually just stop talking to him. Dick down. Sounds like you're a young man and you have time to figure out these things. I don't want to be someone's fucking Yu-Gi-Oh card that they're fucking calling up. Okay, I'm going to summon Blue Eyes White Austin to come over and fuck me today when they got like 50 yeah, all, other all right, cards Austin. in the back. I'm going to go check the doctor's stool for moisture after you're making these Yu-Gi-Oh references. <laughs> God, yeah, I'm sure she really appreciates hey, I it. I thought that was pretty good. Uh, so, I, I, wanted... sorry, I interrupted her to make yeah, fun of yeah, Austin. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, it's yeah, it's no. so easy. <laughs> So the, so they're living out. So the the hookup can be a, a way to live out a fantasy in that. It can be. Yeah. yeah, I mean, people don't necessarily think about like, ooh, I want to be intimate with my hookup partner. They think I want to have some sex. Mm. So let me go do that. Mm. Right. So there's different ways that we're sexual with different people, depending on how we think about them in our lives. Yeah.